Uh. Oh, hey everybody. Uh, nice of you to drop by. Yeah. Uh, you might be a little curious about my situation here. Well, that's because I had an epiphany lately. See, I want to get more videos out on time, and I figure what better way to do that than to isolate myself out in the middle of the woods. So, after real coming to that conclusion, I packed up all my stuff and left, bringing the only bare necessities with me, of course. So I brought my camera, uh, some games, and of course, my gaming setup. And to make sure that I stay focused on the task, I told absolutely no one about this. I can't have people distracting me while I've got work to do. All there's left to do is just to find a game to play. Uh, uh, hmm. and this could work. And I bought this game a few years back, but never actually got around to finishing it. Uh, why don't you join me? I could probably make a new video out of it. Well, that was fun. Guess I can make a video about it now. Jack and Daxter, The Lost Frontier, everybody. A forgotten game of the Jack family. Now, I feel as though I don't need to introduce you to the rest of the group. I mean, after all, they are PS2 classics for... Hang on, something's off about this. Oh! They are PS2 classics for a reason. But I will say this, they are some of my favorites in the system. Now enough chit chat. I wasted enough time as it is. Let's get the show on the road. Watching the beginning cutscene, you might have noticed that the locale has changed significantly since Jack 3, as in THERE IS NO LOCALE! The world is destroying itself due to a lack of ego. If you don't know what ego is, then play a Jack game already. So Jack, Daxter, and Kira try to save the world by finding a new source of ego while they make that sound easy. After some fighting with pirates and landing our ship, we're thrusted into the gameplay, and yeah, it's all coming back to me. The lower frame rate, Jack's sluggish movements, it's definitely not as polished as the PS2 titles. First time going through this, I was a little lost. I didn't know why the game played like a handheld title. But I found out later, this is a handheld title ported onto PS2. That makes a lot of sense, but what that doesn't explain to me is why was this version released the same day as the PSP version? Wouldn't doing that just take attention away from the system it was made for? I know it did for me. So, having to take in consideration for the system it was made for, it plays alright, just disappointing for PS2. I hate that they got rid of Jack's role, if I'm gonna be honest. Running around feels slow without it, and it sucks. Combat is about the same as in previous installments. You've got your melee attacks and your boomsticks. What blows is that there's only four guns in the whole game, which is a downgrade compared to Jack 3's 12 weapon count. I'd be fine with the low gun variety, but these are mostly the exact same weapons from 2 and 3. The only exception being the Lobber, which replaces the Peacemaker. Not as cool, but is fine enough. Though, I find it ironic that the weapon representing Green Eco is the one that blows your opponents to smithereens. Even the gun mods you receive are similar. Damage upgrades, improved rate of fire, but what we get is a level based upgrade mechanic for Jack. You spend Dark Eco to improve your skills like having a stronger punch, more life, or deflecting enemy projectiles. It's just your standard leveling mechanic, but better than nothing. You may have noticed I said you spend Dark Eagle to level up, which is odd since you normally use them to turn into Dark Jack. Why can't I do that here? Well, that seals it. Zero to ten. Goodbye. Where was I? Oh yeah, Dark Jack. Yeah, that blows. Dark Jack was one of the coolest parts of 2. Playing a being filled with nothing but pure hatred and causing all kinds of hell. What does this game have? 
regardless, the game does have its own replacement, Eco Powers. They do offer some decent enough variety, from being bombs to becoming time sensitive platforms. They work fine enough and are nice alternatives. Though screw that Eco Shield. Maybe I'm being a little too harsh here. Dark Jack just probably caused too much issue after all. This is a handheld title. I don't know, maybe I'll see what else the game has to offer. Surely those can do better, right? I immediately regret what I just said. The Tasmanian Daxter, everybody. Isn't this what you've always wanted? Going around, spinning into your opponents, smashing things, tossing giant spiders? Okay, this isn't too bad. There's some cool level manipulation here, such as tossing spiders to stop giant pistons to crush you, or flipping switches to have turrets face the other way. These sections come and go as they don't last very long. I do wish that Daxter had a proper melee attack, however, rather than this dark eco blast. Overall, can't complain too much on its gameplay. It's too bad that these sections are completely worthless. See, here's how the game thrusts you into each of these sections. Daxter falls in a sewer. Fight. Daxter tries ordering from a vending machine. Fight. Daxter gets caught. Fight. None of these scenes have any rhyme or reason to them. They just happen. And every time you finish them, everyone shrugs it off and moves on with their lives. Couldn't Daxter's levels have been somewhat integrated into the story? Like maybe a maximum security prison level where Phoenix is being held against his will, Daxter's brute strength could help get through it. Instead, what we get are a bunch of tacked on levels that, while okay, are completely superfluous. One feature I want to talk about is the aerial gameplay. And you know what? It's not half bad. Flying around doesn't feel too bad, though screw the slower ships. And the dogfighting is kind of fun. Having to maneuver around your opponent to get them off of your back, and you can even send Daxter into a QTE minigame to steal their parts, which you use to upgrade your ship in return. Speaking of which, there's even a nice ship customization mechanic, where you equip your vessel with various totally not stolen mods and weapons. You can even upgrade each one so they're even more effective. There's definitely enough here to make each setup more unique, though the only correct setup is the giant lasers. Flying around, I realize how small each of the five overall maps really are, especially once the faster ship is unlocked. Though, I'm not complaining, because each one's kind of empty. Aside from the main level, there's only two extra side contents keeping you flying around. Some side missions, like a race where you have to shoot down targets, and hunting down dark eco-crystals scattered around the level. This is more of a nitpick in my eyes, but I think it would be kind of cool if there was an extra on foot stage, like a challenge level testing your skills with eco powers and get cool rewards out of it. Hell, it could have replaced just finding random armor sets in the middle of nowhere. But I digress. These side missions are fun for what they are and they help pad the game out. Not that it's a bad thing, but I managed to finish the story in about six hours. And that's with doing everything in the first couple maps. So, they help give you more to do after you inevitably beat the game. And that's Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier for you. A mediocre game that, while have its moments, it could have been so much better. That's all I have to say about it. Hi.